Geordie Grand, never wrong. Better than better than Michelle Margarita. Margarita. <laughs> Hey, Michelle. Jordi. Hello. <laughs> That's so funny. Is it because you've caught sight of yourself in your robe? I know. The robe is back. <laughs> the robe is back. But that with didn't a new take edition. long, did it? <laughs> no. <laughs> the robe and bobble hat. Well, I was going to say we both have new editions. I've got a bobble I'm, hat. I'm in, the, I'm in the bobble beanie and you're in, mm, I've you're got the in same. a beanie too. I have a bobble. Oh, you have a bobble. Oh, I yeah. didn't see that little fluff yeah. ball on top. Oh, yeah. It's not, because it's I, freezing. That's why. Uh, do you not have heating? <laughs> Wasn't that a question you asked me? <laughs> do you know what? Don't ask me about the fucking heating right now, Michelle. There's a little bit of a toing and froing between my husband and I. We've been texting each other this morning. He's at his father's. I'm here. Um, okay. I did say I'm worried we might need a new boiler, and it just hit the. Ro- he hit the roof. Oh Jesus! What about hot water bottles? Oh, I've got plenty of those, except mine that I was using, because I've got one for each child and then myself. The one I had last night, because this has happened to me before, it's starting to, oops, it's starting to wear thin in places. Yes, they and perish. And I'm worried that it might just pop open and scald my lovely creamy thighs well, or speaking- wherever it, <laughs> I have it on my body, you know. Speaking of lovely creamy thighs, this yeah. happened to me last year. So I'm addicted to hot water bottles absolutely well, you're a very them. as i've said before michelle you are a frigid bitch <laughs> it's true oh well i have to warm up and do you know where i put my hot water bottle between your thighs absolutely but guess what happened it burst i knew no. i seem to know what's happening next no you don't know <laughs> i can see the future <laughs> no what happened was and this is a warning to all do not put a hot water bottle between your thighs for sustained and prolonged periods of time because what's happened to me now is, you know when you get the mottled skin from where it's been too hot in one place? Right, yeah. I have like that a and it does it. What? Like a corpse. You know, no. When you see on those TV programs and they roll them over and it's all, what do they call it when the blood... Is sitting there for ages because it stopped flowing and that coagulating morbidity, morbidity or something. Oh, I don't fucking know. know. But it's not that. It's not that. No, what happened was, so I had this mottly um, appearance on my skin that didn't go away after the hot water bottle was taken away. It's still there. So no. Now I, yeah. So I had to buy this cream in Italy, try and get rid of it. it hasn't got rid of it. So my creamy thighs are ruined. Just be very careful. Just be very careful if any of you are considering hugging a hot water bottle for too long. But you know what, Michelle? Um, I feel like I did almost know the future when I was telling that story, when you were telling your story, and (laughs) I was almost there. (laughs) No. And it's a little bit like what we're going to talk about today, isn't it? So we are today talking about New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, yep. And, well, all sorts of shit, but conspiracy theories. Future predictions, the lot. Okay. Well, I, I've actually been looking into Nostradamus. Before we do this. Not conspiracy theories, though. What's it, What conspiracy theories are there about New Year's Eve? Well, we're getting to that, aren't we? Oh, goodness. Not really. It's nothing exciting. Oh, okay. Um, no, but do we have any apologies to make? <laughs> um, probably, but I'm too frightened to make them. Okay. Well, I will just say, in terms of our last episode... I'm shitting myself. (laughs) He's coming after you. Um, Basically, no apologies yet because I think we're going to do an extra droppings about our hometown murder. So Mm. moving on from that, uh, I just wanted to thank your lovely friend, Tamira, who gave us uh, a Moon Lovers Astrology calendar. Oh, yes, Tamira. Thank you, Tamira. I just need to know how to use it now. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> I somehow managed to sync it to my calendar last time and I haven't gotten around to doing it yet because I'm still using my last year's one. But um, she sends it to me every year. We're special, Michelle, Ooh, to get it. Oh, that's very nice. And actually, Tamira makes a little appearance in this week's episode because she was very helpful in uh, do, in my research. I, I said to her many times, I call it research. Really, it's just Googling. It is just Googling. <laughs> But research makes it sound so grown up. I'm bit... doing some research, Tamira. Can you help me? Google. Actually, just Googling, yeah. Yeah. And also, I wanted to just say that um, 
Look, this week, I I went and got a brand on my vagina Ooh. and I gave all my money to Abraham. But just want to tell you, I'm I'm not in a cult. I know that this uh, that the composer of our theme tune the the first one not the last one because we're the composer of the of the outro the composer of the intro my musical partner ben rain was very concerned about you michelle i know i know look i i should try some positive what do you what do you call it laws of attraction attraction. law of attraction no look i know it's not for everyone and and abraham you know speaking Speaking to entities that don't live on this planet sounds a bit weird. I can assure you, Ben, dear, lovely Ben, I'm not in a cult. Although, like I said, I just did give them all my money. <laughs> no, I didn't. You dickhead. I'm not. I'm not in a cult. And if I am, you'd bloody pull me out of that shit quick smart. I, well, I don't know. I, I don't know, actually, about that because it's quite a tough process. And that's something I'd like to look at further down the line, if possible, Michelle, because... You know, it's this shit is real and it happens. People do get taken in and usually it's too late by the time you've realised as friend or family or whatever. It's an interesting thing to think about. Can I just say one more thing before we go into the deep, dark territory? Yeah. I'm friends with your mum on Facebook now. Oh, my God. How did you end up friends with Jen? I don't know. She popped up. I was like, there's Jen. So no. I befriended her and she so you accepted friended me. her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's probably because she enjoys the sound of my voice every week, don't you, Jen? Oh, I think she loves you more than she loves me. <laughs> don't say that. Oh, I hope that's not true. Oh, but speaking of mum, She loves us all. Oh, and your mum. I, yeah. lo- I love that video. My but I did love did. that video. You should befriend her on Facebook because then you get might get more unboxing videos. So they share a Facebook profile oh, and my parents sent me for Christmas Day because we were separated they're in Australia I'm in, in the UK they sent me an unboxing video which I promptly I hope you don't mind mum and dad sent to Michelle because of the comedy value <laughs> it, bloody brilliant. it was comedy gold and do you know what your dad <laughs> I hope there's a bottle of red in there oh there's a bottle of red that's a lot of red <laughs> but um no do you know what we saw your dad two years ago at Christmas and it took me right back right back to the bay so it was very sweet to see when he got you to clean his car of droppings (laughs) (laughs) the few droppings on here and also he kept he kept saying I look like that woman do you remember he has a habit a terrible (laughs) habit of doing that Ah. comparing people to famous people and it's not usually flattering flattering it wasn't flattering (laughs) it's a little quirk Quirk of Robbie's, the Bobby Dazzler. Oh, I'd love your dad. But speaking of my mum, right? Yes. She used to have this book uh, back in the 70s and 80s. I can't remember exactly when, but it scared the living shit out of me. I was, it was like car crash. I was so morbidly fascinated by it. It was Prophecies by Nostradamus. Are you joking? No. My parents had this. My dad was hooked on that book. Like, I mean, I, he could barely hooked even on that English. book. He was hooked on books. <laughs> he he had that book, and Mum had it too. And we would, when we weren't reading Flowers in the Attic and oh, Christian F, we were uh, I know terrible, terrible books. We were we were reading Nostradamus. <gasps> well, I couldn't read it because it was so frightening, and also I didn't really understand it. And you know, you've got to remember, we were children of the eighties. That was a time. Excuse of- me. <laughs> that was the time, the Cold War, the, nu- the nuclear threat, the threat of complete annihilation, World War Three was always hanging over us. And, that AIDS. and Skylab. AIDS. Yeah, Skylab was falling. It was going to fall on Australia. AIDS. There were so yeah. many things the that Grim could have Reaper. killed us. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah so I, know. I was I was terrified as a as a child, as a I tween. Wasn't. I was. I, no, I didn't. I, You're I fearless. Mean, we were, no, I just think we were too busy doing calisthenics. <laughs> we just didn't have time. I was too busy wearing a, sh- a shiny leotard with sequins. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was doing that too. Jazz ballet, we called it, not calisthenics. Oh, no. Well, this is the one where you do marching and national anthems and you swing rods and clubs. No. I yes. was in something. I was invited to be in something called the Kids Company, though, which was like a, a children's theatre. Oh, group wow. that was arranged oh. by local business people and I would some have loved that. jazzy teachers. <laughs> yeah, we only had about one or two goes at it. And it was like written by the adults and we yeah. all had a, a bit to do. But I still remember the theme song. We are the kids, 
kids. <laughs> Company, we are the kids. <laughs> kids, company. Who Did you are write we? It? One, two, three. Kids, kids, company. It's very, <laughs> it's very summer heights high, Mr. G, isn't it? It is. You just need some <laughs> jazz hands, <laughs> Mr. G. So anyway, bloody Nostradamus gave me the fear and uh, I couldn't bear to think about it. So when we were doing our research stroke Googling about this episode, because, mm-hmm. you know, he's, there's always going to be a theory or, oh, my God, here it comes. 2021 is the year that, you know, something goes terribly wrong. I mean, not You're like all... it hasn't already gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> not Who saw agree. that coming? Did you know that he was a, he was all sorts of things, Michelle? He was like your um, medieval mystic Meg, but only after becoming a <laughs> physician. He was a physician, oh. first of all, but he didn't have a medical degree. So I think oh. he was ultimately, I think he was a bit of a chancer. And he was very popular with the upper classes. He was French. Catherine de Medici, who was the queen at the time, loved him. She had him on hand. What's going to happen next, Nostradamus? And he'd say, "Um, let me just, uh, give me a second. And he'd sit down and write his famous quatrains, which is like a four-lined poem. And he would make them as vague as possible. So then it was in the interpretation. And obviously the interpretation of Nostradamus over the years, 400 years later or so, um, because it was in 1955 that he first published his this prophecies book. 1955. Sorry, 1555. (laughs) Did you mishear me or did I say it wrong? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) It's only a couple of metres. (laughs) <laughs> he, yeah, he published it in 1555. So it's a long old time ago. People are still re- reinterpreting. And quite often it's interpreted after the event. So okay. no one can really tell you what's going to happen. I'll tell you yeah. a few of them in a minute. And obviously you'll go, oh, but that's definitely that. But it's not a prophecy when it's been interpreted after the fact. It's called something else and I can't remember what that is. Um, It's called bullshit. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Anyone can figure shit out after the fact. It's like, oh, I knew that was going to happen. Well, no, you didn't. Because no. if you did, you would have done things differently. Exactly. Well, there, there's been some major world events that have occurred since Nostradamus died. Um, can I just ask one thing? Yeah. Did he predict the pandemic? Well, they think that he did. Oh, and I'll get to that. Shit. Well, okay. obviously, because they found things. But you know what, Michelle? Fake news. There's all sorts of fake news out there. We're going to get to that too in a minute because I found some interesting stuff. Apart, yeah, okay. So he was said to predict many major events in history, such as the rise of Hitler, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, JFK and Robert Kennedy's assassinations, both of them, and 9-11. But of course, as I've said, it was always cryptic and it's all translated from different people from a medieval form of written French. So it can't really be relied upon that well. But No, because you have to rely on whoever's hmm. trans, uh, translating. transcribing it and exactly. translating it. Yeah. And I do think they add a few words in here and there. And let me let me show you some examples. Okay, <laughs> here's one very good prediction. And it is, as I've said, this isn't Nostradamus's prediction as such because it would have been written in this old French in a quatrain, which is four lines. How can you get all that info out of four lines? Hitler's terror in Europe, and it's made up of two quatrains. So they've obviously found one and then found another. And also in the book, it's made up of, I don't think it's actually um, written consequentially. What's the word? Uh, It's not written in sequence. And and when he's written a chapter or something, like a bunch of quatrains, I don't remember how many, makes a century, maybe a hundred. Maybe it's a hundred, but he calls <laughs> Maybe it Maybe it's a hundred. <laughs> I didn't do my research very well because I was bored about most of all that stuff. Things with numbers bore me. But anyway, this prediction, right? This is it. From the depths of the west of Europe, a young child will be born of poor people. He who by his tongue will seduce a great troop. His fame will increase towards the realm of the east. That's the first one, right? The right. second one, which they put together... Beasts ferocious with hunger will cross the rivers. The greater part of the battlefield will be against Hister, with a capital H. Okay. Into a cage of iron will the great one be drawn when the child of Germany observes nothing. Right, let me just get to that bit about Hister. Apparently, uh, the old name for the Danube. Really? Yes, apparently. Okay, because I was thinking, "Mm, could this be history? It's hister as like as spelt like hipster, but without the p. Okay. 
All hipster. right. Yeah. Um, and apparently Hitler was born miles from the Danube. So there we go. There's another connection. All right. Uh, Germany is a part of the axis of power. So that's in the West, allied with Japan, the East. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And of course, we know that the only way that Hitler rose to power with his crazy ideas was by using his intense oratory skills to mobilize the Nazi party in Germany in the years following World War One. Yeah, and he, was mean, born, and he was born to poor parents as well. So that's how they've kind of stuck that one together. I don't know if I'm into that. Mm. I, it sounds a bit tenuous. Well, it is tenuous. And then it goes on to say that Nostradamus often incorporated anagrams into his writing. Did he really, though? Or was it just a typo? Or was it another Doris Stokes ch- you know, chancer kind of like, <laughs> is it an M? It's not an M? Okay, it must be a P. It's a P? No, not a P. Okay. But also, I mean, from medieval French, come on, that's a little far fetched. I think, I think that's that's how I'm. I'm not. I'm not gonna give that a tick. Nostradamus fans believe mm-hmm. that he also uh, predicted pro- uh, things like air travel when he said something along the lines of "people will travel safely through the sky." Now, don't okay. forget, I haven't double checked. I haven't cross referenced these. They are just from a collection I found on the internet. Yeah. The year of the Great Fire of London, he said, the blood of the just will be demanded of London, burnt by fire in three times 20 plus six, which apparently, I didn't do the maths, equals 1666, which is the year of the Great Fire of London. But only 10 people died in that. Oh. Did you know that? No, I thought it was... It was much more devastating. Well, it was, I think it was at the, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure people will. I can hear Moira taking pen to paper right now. <laughs> but uh, I think it was the end of the Great Plague, the plague, the Black Plague, which killed right. obviously lots of people. I think the fire somehow stopped the spread. Maybe that's what we need. Oh, <laughs> we had one last year. Well, Australia did, didn't they? Bloody hell. God, yeah. Terrible. He also wrote about something which bore a striking resemblance to 9-11. This is from LiveScience.com. Very interesting. Listen to this, Michelle. Two steel birds will fall from the sky on the metropolis. The sky will burn at 45 degrees latitude. Fire approaches a great new city. Immediately, a huge scattered flame leaps up. Within months, rivers will flow with blood. The undead will roam the earth for a little time. He's also predicting zombie apocalypse there what do you think is weird about that particular prophecy Mish? the word metropolis how the fuck did that even exist way back then it didn't exist what else mm, well it's more than know. a it's more than a quatrain isn't it there's loads of well yeah that's in true there. yes and steel wasn't invented until no! about yeah so it wasn't until about um 1854 that still was invented, and that's nearly 200 years after Nostradamus died. So that one is fake news. Well, because I was going to say, hmm, that actually sounds like pretty good, but mm. fake. Well, it can be when you make it up in retrospect. <laughs> but there are people who, like I said before, are desperate to attribute some of the, the coronavirus to some of his prophecies. Oh, God. Okay, yes. But unfortunately, well, okay, so there's a few highlighted um, passages like the Great Plague of the Maritime City and another one that says, and diverse plagues will be upon mankind. Mm. All sounds very biblical, doesn't it? It But ultimately, there's a fake prophecy doing the rounds, which Reuters had to flag and Facebook removed. So if you've heard this following one, it is a fake. There will be a twin year, 2020, doesn't say that, that's just me, (laughs) from which will arise a queen, Corona. Who will come from the east, China, and will spread a plague, (laughs) virus, in the darkness of night on a country with seven hills. Italy? Does Italy have seven hills? And will transform the twilight of men to dust, death, to destroy and ruin the world's economy as we know it. Oh, nice one, people. Because what's better in, in a pandemic than a bit of fear? Of course. And everybody absolutely terrified of bankruptcy. Absolutely. And, oh, my God. And it's given rise to so many conspiracies, hasn't it, Michelle? I mean, oh. QAnon and all that crazy. All that stuff. I mean, you, you're you more into all of that. I, I simply don't have time to investigate all mm. those conspiracy well, don't. theories. Don't, because it's just more anxiety that you don't need in a time of such uncertainty when you're trying to make businesses work and can't see family. Oh, shit. Yeah. It's just crap. Yeah. Oh, 
So there's more. There's a couple more. Let me just go a couple more before we wrap him up. He had a prediction of the King of Terror descending from the sky, and that was thought to be an apocalypse in 1999. But instead, it was just a solar eclipse, <laughs> which was nice. Yeah, nice, a nice surprise for all of those standing on the hilltop waiting to die. But he was so vague and ambiguous. So people are just getting creative. Yeah, of course, and also to. You can read into stuff, whatever you want to read into it. You know, it's all interpretation and it's where your, where your head's at, you know. Yeah. Conspiracy theory is the same. If you, see, you can see patterns wherever you look if you want to. Yeah, so I, I just think that if you're a positive person, you can interpret a prediction in a positive way. And if you're, you know, conspiracy theorist, doomsdayer, sayer, whatever, you're just going to be like, we're all going to fucking die. Do you want to hear a few 2021 predictions? Oh, yes, I but do. But not from Nostradamus. Although this one is Nostradamus's. I okay. said before that he has predicted that there will be a zombie apocalypse, something I'm very much looking forward to. <laughs> How I love a zombie. Not Do you? No, I fucking I don't hate like... them. I can't watch anything <laughs> that's got to do with zombies. I went to the movies to see 28, is it 28 Days Later? Oh, with, yes, with Kieran. Um, no, what? Killian, his name's Killian. Oh, Killian, my Killian. Boy. Yeah. Um, I met him and I said, oh, is your name Killian? That's the same as my son. He said, yes, only the best people have the name Killian. Oh, and oh. he's so handsome, those blue eyes. I love him in Peaky Blinders. He's about as tall as your fiancé. Even better. Yeah, perfect. Peaky fucking blinders. <laughs> Very good. Anyway, him aside, Killian aside, zombies, I don't like them. I had to run home from the cinema in Peckham. <laughs> I ran all the way home. I was so scared. Anyway, I get scared of I had to leave, too. actually. I had to leave. The, the, halfway through the film, I had to leave and go to the toilet. Really, I just stood outside <laughs> for a few minutes. <laughs> Collect your thoughts. <laughs> Collecting myself. Uh, the zombie apocalypse, right? So he, this is Nostradamus's. He's got quite a following in the apocalypse community. But um, due to, obviously, the cryptic nature that you can't really tell. I, I, can't, I haven't got any examples. I think I used my only, only example before, which was uh, the one about the river. What was it? The undead. He said some things about oh, the undead. Oh, all right. I all don't right. have. I don't have it here to hand. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have even got you excited about that one. <laughs> what about this one? The second coming. That's coming this this year, apparently. Oh Jesus! That's been coming. The second Jesus, coming. the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> it has been coming for a long time, and he never comes. American pastor Kenton B. Shaw, and I had to look him up because I thought, that's a fake name. That is a fake. You can't Ken be Shaw. Sure. Kenton B. Shaw? Or <laughs> Kenton B. Shaw? Anyway, he claims he has strong evidence that the rapture will happen in 2021, but his credibility is marred slightly by the fact that he, this is his second try. His first end of the world was supposed to happen in 1988. Okay, now was he a bit Keith Ranieri? Did, was he a bit culty? I don't know. Did he's he still, have a following? He, I think he's was he a, bit a television. I think he's a television um, what, pastor. TV evangelist. Yeah. Jesus Christ. And Ben's exactly. worried about me being yeah. <laughs> Ben's worried about me being in a cult. <laughs> ben, oh Ben, yeah. I thought you meant Ben Mendelssohn for a second. He wasn't mentioned, was he? Do you think Ben Mendelssohn's worried that I'm in a cult? Yeah, he's very concerned about you generally, Michelle. He's con particularly concerned about your use of the word cunt. <laughs> Not cult. <laughs> Apologies, <laughs> Mum. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ben, for your concern. Oh, we'll chat it over over a cuppa. Do you want to hear about the Torah Code? Oh, yes. All right. I feel like, do you know what? I feel like I know... Well, I don't know about it, but I feel like I've heard about Torah code. Well, so some scholars have supposedly just deciphered a series of hidden codes in the Jewish Torah's first five books. They translate as the world will end in 2021. Boom. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> the end. The end. Quite literally. <laughs> Failed predictions of years gone by. Oh, I bet you there's a lot of those. Do you remember the Mayan calendar in 2012? Do you oh. remember that? That was a thing. Remind me, remind me. There was, there was a, a Mayan calendar which went from God knows how long ago, probably the, the dawn of time, and it, only, it stopped on December the 21st, 2012. Okay. Yeah. And in the run-up to that day, the internet was going nuts with predictions about the apocalypse happening on, 12, on the 12th of 
the 12th, no, 21st of the 12th, 12th. Oh, God. Yeah. Anyway. But faced with all that alarmist information, uh, NASA had to put out uh, uh, some information saying that it's not going to end. NASA. Okay. Well, look, this this leads right into the whole Y2K bullshit. Oh, yes. yes. Let's hear about yes. the Y2K bug, the millennium bug. The millennium it? bug. Well, look, before I even start that, what did you do on the year 2000? Do you even remember? Oh, my God. Was that the year? Yes, I do. I wasn't very well because I I peaked the night before. We were all in Scotland. Drunk. (laughs) Yeah. We were in Scotland, uh, north of Argyll. A friend of mine has a beautiful – he's on a salmon farm. Mm-hmm. And you get a boat and you can go out to an island. There's a bunch of us rock and rollers in a van. It was me and the other girl in my, another girl in my band, Helen and mm. Killian, who was only about, what was he, 10? No, nine? Yeah. I can't remember how old he was yeah. then. And then a bunch of boys from rock bands were there. The night before was our other friend, our friend Schilt's birthday. In fact, we're celebrating that tonight. We're going to have a little Zoom call. But... Uh, that's right. They all ran down this snowy hill naked. Him and another guy, <laughs> Sean, but and Helen joined them. But she said, "I'll go behind you, and you're not to turn around and look." And she just was topless. They were naked. She was topless. They re- it was after drinking a bottle of tequila. Yeah. Um, with like this, we had to have a scarf and a hat on, and it was tequila <laughs> and champagne shots. So this is on the thirtieth, not the thirty-first. Yeah. So the next night, I wasn't very well, and I think I ended up peaking too early throwing yeah. up on a windowsill and oh. when I woke up no one was there except for Helen and and Killian because they'd all gone to a party in a castle somewhere oh, at, an, at a yeah. Scottish MP's house oh you missed out they had a whale of a time and we missed those, it oh those champagne and tequila shots did you in oh, no well there you go hmm. that was 2000 but I lived <laughs> to tell the sorry tale there was a lot of puking I don't actually think I puked on 2000, New Year's Eve. Actually, I don't think I've ever puked on New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve's always a dud. It's always a dud. Yeah. Except that year was, well, it was a dud. But the the day before was much better. Yeah. I find that in general, New Year's Eve is a bit of a dud. Don't get your hopes up. No, but everyone does. They're always like, oh, they put all this pressure on, like, oh, it's going to be the best night. And they, they try to organise all this stuff. And then, all those honestly. those fireworks, the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Westminster. Yeah, Thames. but, and I've done both of those. I mean, my very first uh, New Year's Eve in London, I didn't know what to do. So I told my then boyfriend, what do we do? And we went to Big Ben. And it was such a dud. I'd you know, do you that. Were, No, it was awful. You're there with, like, thousands and th- tens of thousands of people on, on Westminster Bridge and then you hear Big Ben chime you're like well that's Woo-hoo. it. Yeah, How are you going to get deal? a night bus home? Yeah everyone's <laughs> everyone's throwing up on the night bus, they're stabbing you for a hot chip, you know it's all it's all go on those night buses. Stabbing you for a hot chip? Yes. This sounds like an actual event that occurred what happened? Did no, you get it stabbed did. for a hot chip? No, somebody on the um oh god, what was it? The N N sixty two or something got yeah. stabbed over a, over some hot chips. Were you there? No, but I was there. God, I had this one time when um, a friend of mine from Australia had come to visit me, and we were on the night bus, and you know, on the top deck when uh you've got that's like the best seat in the house, right at the front. Oh yeah, right at the very front. So you're that like is at a the good window view. Yeah. So anyway. It was, there was one free. And so I said to my friend, let's go, best seat in the house. So we went down, looked to our left. There's a girl going down on a guy. Mm. Oh. Oh. (laughs) Oh, That's why no one was sitting there. (laughs) That's exactly why no one was sitting there. And my friend looked and she's like, what the fuck? And this girl literally just like throws something at her. Oh well, stop that, you dirty girl! We were in shock, and then oh she kind of like she jumped off it, looked Ew. up at us, and said, "What? Got a problem?" Yes, and- I do <laughs> have a problem. Is what I would have said. Please don't do that. Well, then get this. Then it was his turn. So then no! he got places. Oh! She pops both feet no! on the window, and he's down there. 
oh no and i was and like sitting there with yeah, your flat. no I'm, oh, i was like we need to move and i was like Welcome to fucking London. That's a oh, night bus experience for you. It was. I've never awful. heard that story, Michelle. I've gone quite faint. Oh, I think I must have blocked it. But yeah, really, that's, that's horrific. That's, <laughs> that's worse than sitting next to a guy watching porn on his phone oh. in the morning, which is I've seen. Is that your husband? Train. Not my <laughs> husband. <laughs> I know. Because no, he rides his bike to work. Oh, he hasn't got his hands free. <laughs> oh dear, that's just awful, Michelle. I don't know how I'm going to come back from that. <laughs> you won't. The memories with you, false memory, but God. that'll be your memory now of the night bus. <laughs> I'm sorry that happened to you. Yeah, no, but it was obviously that was a little, even a little more exciting than watching fucking Big Ben and then <laughs> dispersing. But anyway, um, yeah, year 2000, I was in Sydney and I was with my then boyfriend, Paul. And we had we'd actually been recording an album and we had this American record producer working with us and he was old dude, like Dinosaur, had worked with like Jim Morrison and Tom Jones and all these sort of old school big names. But he was quite a difficult person. And I had made the mistake of saying, oh, for, you know, year 2000, my friend has invited my boyfriend and I to her friend's house so friend of a friend who's right on the harbour for the most spectacular Sydney Harbour Bridge fireworks which I don't know if you've ever seen them Geordie Mm-mm. oh actually uh, 1988 we sat on a, a mound in Manly and watched them with my parents 1988 or was it what was the year of the centenary was it 1988 let's make it great in 88 <laughs> it must be <laughs> I think that but was from it. Manly. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember that song. <laughs> <laughs> the tall uh, ships. They were there. We saw the tall yeah, ships. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, this was two thousand, and so anyway, he begged to come to this party, and I didn't want him to come. My friend didn't want him to come, and so it was a really bit of a miserable New Year. I mean, mm, the fireworks. Responsible. Yes, and you know he's in his sixties, and there are all these like youngsters you know, doing their thing and had no interest in him. But it was, so that was really awkward, really awkward New but Year. But hang on, did he live in Australia or had he come all that way just to produce your album? No, no, he was living in Australia. God okay. knows how he ended up from LA to, all the way to to Sydney, Australia. So it wasn't like he was, on, he was visiting like and doing you a great big No, no, and, no, but I just don't think he had many many pals like I said he was quite a oh. difficult person and so that kind of made you know, our new millennium um new year celebration a little bit a little bit awkward oh. but back to Y2K so look for anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about if you weren't born or <laughs> somehow it it didn't touch you basically it was a computer bug that as you said before it was actually called also the millennium bug and the theory behind it was basically that all the computers in the world were going to shut down at the stroke they of midnight. They were going to reset because, apparent, because of the way that they were um, binary code or something. Yes. Or some, something like that. It would just reset to zero, 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 zero. Yeah, because on the 1st of January, the year 2000, everything would change because computer gra- programmers, and I think quite short-sightedly they had programmed only up until the 31st of December 1999 because in the 60s when computer programs were first written um, engineers they they only used two digit code for the year Mm. so they used 60 instead of 1960 that's not very forward thinking is it no uh, hippies no and so all these you know, computer scientists really believed that in the year 2000, the zero zero would make everything reset back to 1900. And that this would have really devastating effects on things like power plants and banks and uh, radiation nuclear sites and all this kind of stuff. And the economy, because I guess people would have taken money out of the bank so they wouldn't lose, like it wouldn't be like if your 20 grand in the bank would be reduced to zero in the morning. Well, this is what happened. You know, there were all these like 
you know, doomsday radicals and, you know, crazy people who were just um, going nuts. And they were like building survival bunkers. They were taking all their money out of the bank. They stocked up on loads of tin food and bottles of water. And in America, they stocked up on guns. Because... Well, they would be ready for that because there are so many of those yeah. um, doomsday people living in the hills, isn't there? Oh, in fuck, fuck America, absolutely. And so they were all like stocking up on guns because they wanted to protect their their loot, you know. They, they wanted to protect their tin food. And do you know what? I re- actually remember Paul and I, we had talked about it. We were like, well... I think it's all bullshit, but what if it happens? Maybe maybe we should go and just like get some tin food. So we went to the supermarket and I remember just looking at the aisles and thinking, I don't even fucking like tin corn. I don't want those beans. Like so I think we ended up buying like chips and champagne and just going, Oh fuck it, if it's the end of the world, let's just drink champagne. But yeah, so in the end, um obviously in hindsight, we all know that nothing happened. But yeah, on the stroke of midnight, yeah, nothing, nothing went down. I mean, there were a, a few little hiccups in the world, but the world did not end. Computers no. did not reset. No one lost their money. Banks didn't go nuts. Hospitals didn't shut down. Power plants didn't erupt. Nothing happened. <laughs> Is that because they had all these IT consultants working away, you know, in the run up to it to well, look, try and adjust the, the clock, the internal clocks and whatnot? Well, look, they did. And because essentially, I think some computer programmer went, well, if it's programmed to two digits, let's just program it to four. How fucking hard is that? A but, simple fix. Well, you would think, but yeah. no. And governments all around the world were throwing millions and millions and millions at this problem and trying to get ready, prepare for it. And, you know, in the end, and I actually read something about this, it said in the end that the countries who threw money at the problem had no more and no oh, and no less issues than the, than the countries like Italy <laughs> who just went, ah, it'll be fine, don't worry about it, we'll just deal with whatever happens when it happens. And everyone sort of, in the end, had the same amount of little glitches and yeah. all shit just didn't happen. Although I did actually read that um, apparently Australia invested millions, like loads and loads and loads of money into preparing for this Y2K bug and actually um, recalled all of their embassy staff from Russia because Russia was like, fuck it, we're not going to invest in this. Y2K bullshit like it's not nothing's gonna happen so Australia brought all their diplomats home from Russia and nothing happened so Um, I think Australia were real doomsdayers when it came you know internationally on that scene but right yeah I think and there were lots of conspiracy theories about this this is what I was mentioning before about conspiracy theories you know people people basically saying you know Y2K is they, you know, they had all sorts of like crazy theories. I can't even really remember what they are because I didn't. I just skipped over them because they were kind of boring. But yeah, people thought that it was all meant to, you know, bring us all back to zero. Yeah, people do the craziest things, so don't they? When they think that the world might end. Do you know? In 1910, Halley's Comet was passing through, and it goes. I think it goes around every 76 years. And on this particular occasion, uh, the panic was like really high before it arrived so many people were worried that it would crash into the world and end it or the poisonous gases in the tail was going to be a be a problem people were selling fresh air bottled air (laughs) and some people tried to sacrifice a virgin what yeah that's what i I heard probably a few more around back then than there are now Certainly on the not on the number ninety six bus or whatever it was coming back from Westminster. <laughs> oh, the old good old night bus. I do miss a good night bus. Mm, I don't. No, I don't. Actually, Uber they all, all the way. Oh God, the night buses. Do you know what? They always used to stink as well. Mm. Jesus, not just a fanny juice, but just oh, you know, shell. No, oh, on a hot summer's day, my I'll be God, cutting that. Smell on the one to Peckham. I tell what? you, ew. 
know. Anyway, anyway. Michelle. So, sorry, Robin. Sorry, I know oh, your mum doesn't like God. that kind of talk. I'll be cutting that from this. <laughs> Good Lord. Listen, let's get on to Tamira. I don't want to go straight from Fanny Juice to Tamira, but we're going to. <laughs> She's a lovely girl. And I met her here in London and now she lives in Sydney. Well, she's from Sydney. Um, she I've told met Tamira me recently, a couple of you times. You have met her a couple yes. of times. Hi, Tamira. Uh, she's an astrologer, numerologist, uh, feng shui expert. She's doing vision board workshops, which I love the idea of. I really want to go to one of those. Have you ever done a vision board? I've got one, yes, on my Pinterest. Yeah. Did it, has any of it come true? Yep, some of it has. Oh, good for you. I did yeah. one. Not a single fucking thing came true. I mean, I did put yes. incredible stuff on there, but you I, ch- had, I chucked it let's away. Let's move to the mountains in your flat in Brixton. And where are I you did. now? I did. That is true. I had that. I am. Yeah. And do you know what? Before I moved to London, I had bought a vintage silk scarf that had all the um, landmarks of London on it. Oh. And I had tied it up in our uh, recording studio in our in our house. And uh, and I would always look at it, and I was like, I "Fucking hate London. Never want to move there." What happens? Move to you London. You move to London. Yeah. So Yay. these small things—they're all in the vortex, not in a cult. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, did you know that uh, there was? Did you hear about that on the twenty-first and twenty-second of December? There was the bright star. There was a conjunction between mm-hmm. Jupiter and Saturn that caused a hugely great big star. We didn't see it here, unfortunately, because it was very cloudy. Mm-hmm. It was over a period of like Tamira had put out the information of where, where, and when you will see it, like in which hemisphere. Oh, um, and she said she gave a few ideas on doing some cleansing ceremonies and getting rid of some old stuff, bringing in some new stuff. Um, somebody thought um, it was an astrologer said that it happened uh, 400 years ago last time and it won't happen again until 2080 so it was a once in a lifetime experience and it could have been the star that the three wise men follow it's the Christmas star Oh, I don't really know about all the dates and stuff but you know what I think Tamira would love it where I am because Honestly, it's like you can like put your hand out and just take a star from the sky. We are wow. so high up. And because um, Zermatt is a car-free town, there's no pollution here. <gasps> like none. And we're a tiny, tiny village. So there's really no light pollution either. And I tell you, Andreas and I have seen some fucking insane things in the sky that we can't even explain. What do you mean? Well, we've seen lights in the sky and on the mountain that we're like what the fuck is that and we've asked people did you see that last night people like no don't talk about it well we took some pictures of it because it was crazy i'm not saying it's aliens i'm just saying it's maybe aliens (laughs) so i don't know (laughs) (laughs) okay Anyway. I'm not saying, but I am saying. <laughs> well, let's look into that. Definitely yeah. interested in aliens. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, Back to but Tamira. But did you know that we, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius? Aquarius. The age of Aquarius. <laughs> um, last 2,000 years, we've been in the age of Pisces, which is the symbol of the fish. Yes. Well, that's all about one religion, one god, very strict, very, uh, very re- like regime fueled, and rigid. And, okay, and rigid. The the Christians, born again Christians, have adopted that fish symbol because they think it's something to do with the loaves and the fishes. But actually, it's more to do with Pisces, apparently. Oh, don't know what. Let's ask Doreen Virtue about that. <laughs> she won't. She'll be. She'll saying, be born no, 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 again. Don't bring that up. <laughs> but the age of Aquarius, no one can actually be sure when it starts, but all bets are on now, basically. Okay. Yeah. All right. A, yeah. And a common position expressed by many astrologers sees the age of Aquarius as the time when humanity takes control of the earth and its own destiny as its rightful heritage, with the destiny of humanity being the revelation of truth an expansion of consciousness. So it's getting a little bit more airy fairy and out Ooh. there and knowledge and technology and very feminine energy as well. Lovely. Yeah. So uh, technology will be the new leader of the world, not religion. We'll be moving away from that. Uh, it, yeah. It, yeah. So basically scientific rationalism combined with the fall of religious influence, increasing f- focus on human rights, exponential growth of technology, 
space travel. Uh, these are all things that are being heralded by the age of Aquarius. Feminine energy, like I said, so women will start to become actually equal for reals. Yeah. Love Finally. to see that. Do you think mm-hmm. we'll be alive or dead by then? Yeah. Who well, knows? you know, we've, we've developed a lot of resilience from this year that we've just had, right? Because it's of been course. a shitty old fucking weird time. And a lot of people are saying it's been an opportunity to, to press pause or reset. Absolutely. Bit. That's what we've done. And I think personally. it is a good idea because our environment is absolutely struggling. It's a nightmare. And also the mental health issues that are being you know already there in existence everybody is actually getting a little feeling of what it feels like to be lonely to be isolated and maybe they're a bit more understanding as a result of that of people who have struggled with mental health issues for a long a longer time so it brings healing this new age rebuilding freedom is a word that i found in a lot i read a lot of the horoscopes for the coming year i don't usually read horoscopes anymore but i did this um for this research and (laughs) freedom was a word that kept popping up but so are intense weather events we had a very windy night the other night and i'm not just talking about the duvet lifting (laughs) on my husband's side of the bed (laughs) yes (laughs) political unrest and missiles being launched now that doesn't sound too great does it No. no But other themes include finding your tribe. One love is something that Tamira was really promoting and okay. the pursuit of utopia. Oh, but she's well. very positive. She's a very positive person when she looks at her at her kind of stars aligning and whatnot. Who doesn't want utopia? I know. Oh, do you know what? Did I tell you my friend Hugh, he's he's getting a, a, a plaque engraved for his door, his front a door. A plaque. Yes, a plaque. You say plaque, I say plaque. All right, you say tomato, I said tomato. No, I say tomato. Anyway, he's getting this. I say tomato. <laughs> tomato. <laughs> tomato. <laughs> Potato. Potato. <laughs> Potato. What's um, he getting? A plaque for his he, door saying, Mi well, casa su casa. No, no. Lady. Done Roman. No, he's saying, it says, welcome to Hutopia. Oh. oh, I quite like that. I thought that was quite sweet. <laughs> if I was a girl on a date with him being, you know, taking it one step forward to the, co- the coffee in the <laughs> to house. To the utopia. I'd be like, oh, I'm just, oh, I think my Uber's here. <laughs> no, Hugh, it's a lovely idea. Here's a fun fact. Uranus is the pal- planet of surprise. <laughs> How about that? That's something I. I always get. I get a surprise if it's always if it's down that side. <laughs> it's moving through a seven-year cycle with Taurus, but I don't care about that. I just like the surprise element. <laughs> Uranus is always a surprise to me, Geordie. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, you're a Gemini. I am. Would you like me to tell you a little, very, very potted horoscope for your year ahead? Go ahead. All right. <laughs> is this from Tamira? No. Oh, okay. But you've got the moon thing, so you can look up, look it up yourself. I've got to bloody learn how to use it. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk you through it. Okay. So, Gemini's, invest in yourself, which I think is a good idea. Yes, invest thank in you. Yourself. Yep. Yes, thank you. <laughs> you've got a year of fluctuating cash flow. No. Well, that's just going to be flows how to it me. is. Money flows Money to flows me. Money flows to Money you, but it'll flow back and forth. You'll be okay, though, because you're going to invest in yourself. Okay. You'll good. be fine. You need to, Michelle, you need to surrender to not knowing. What's going to happen next? You just have to go with the flow. Okay. All right. I'm, Can you do that? I'm generally pretty good with that. All right. Let's 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 watch this space. Okay. <laughs> do you want to hear about me? Yes. Leo? Go, Leo. Well, my public and private partnerships will be energized. That's Ooh. always nice to hear. Yes. I need to get some advice on what to, to do to save or invest money because uh. also I'm going to have, like the rest of the world and you, a bit of a fluctuation of income probably yeah. this year. Okay. I need to be flexible and try new things. Calisthenics. Doing the splits. <laughs> oh, <laughs> about. I've never been able to do the splits. Oh, I used to just fall into the splits. Oh, well, I'll try it. No, but I think I think it's flexible, flexible out- outlook. Flexible groin. Yeah. <laughs> I need to consider that the other person might be right. Ah, that is very interesting. Yes. Okay. All right. So you can help me keep an open mind and I can tell you you're not always right. Oh, or maybe say it nicer than that or they might be fisticuffs. 
<laughs> You're not right, Geordie, all the time. Geordie Grunch is never wrong. <laughs> That's the mantra. Well, I thought we could just do a little Sing quick... a song? What? No. My old man says follow the van. <laughs> no? I was thinking more about doing a little uh, year-end review. Okay. I'd just like to know what went well for you this year. Oh, this podcast? Yeah. This has been something to look forward to every week. Not only do we, uh, well, we talk a lot anyway. Yeah. But it's something to look forward to. It's a good it's little that we think about. Yeah. Chit-chatter. Nitter-natter. It's a wonderful social time for us, isn't it? Yeah. Especially in a year where you can't really be getting out and about. We have had a few disappointments. There was birthday parties that had to be cancelled. There were tri- a couple of trips for you to London and for me to Switzerland that were yeah. cancelled. Yeah, not so good. Well, I was going to say what didn't go so well, but you jumped, jumped to it. Sorry. <laughs> so what else went well for you? Anything? Um... It's hard. You think about it. I'll tell you what I what right. went well for me. Uh, obviously, Andre is proposing. At he got down on one knee. Year. He did, even though he's broke his leg four times. He did oh. actually get down on one knee, but he did have to put some snow under the knee. So, oh. <laughs> so did he like make a little mound in the snow? And then you were like, "What are you doing?" Oh, he's doing a shoelace up. <laughs> I thought you meant, is he doing a shit? Um, no, no, he. Oh, <laughs> it sounded like a sh word. But, it was a uh, sh- but it wasn't shit. What else went well? Oh, well, not. I mean, actually, I've been skiing recently, and my skiing's gone super shit. But before lockdown, I was actually skiing red runs, so that was something I was really proud of. Obviously, this podcast. Um, I'm. I. I really appreciate that Andreas's dad had a near miraculous recovery from cancer this year. Oh wow! I'm. Um, I appreciate that we didn't go bankrupt in this fucker of a year, which. Right. Where's you know a real possibility? So they're the good things, Aww. and just and actually, you said a bit about this before the set point and or just the reset point of realizing that um, I can be very happy with very little. I don't need a lot, and that it was really nice to be able to, even though there was anxiety about the business, um, it was really nice just to spend time with Andreas and have that time. I appreciate that too. I appreciate the fact that the anxiety levels were fucking through the roof in the beginning of the year and the what next, what next were also anxiety inducing. But then there was a point where my husband said to me, you've got nowhere to be. You've got nothing to do. We're in the middle of nowhere. We were caring for my father-in-law who has Alzheimer's at the time when it all kicked off. At the last minute, suddenly he just... Paddy just said to me, it's going to be fine. You've got nowhere to go. Spring is coming. We're here. We're fine. It's good. Just relax. And when I did that, it was the most amazing feeling because I've always worked to the clock, always been, you know, driven by the clock, hate being late for anything, um, always worried about what next, what next. And then I let go and it felt really good. Obviously, yes, at the beginning of the pandemic when every, everything was shut down and nobody knew what was going on and what would happen. Yeah, it was it was really stressful. But same same with you. I mean, Andreas was like, well, what are you going to do? We just have to accept where we are and make the best of it. And we just got on and did loads of stuff together, enjoyed being together. Being in the moment. Yeah, being in the moment, took lots of hikes. You know, every day we would grab a beer, grab some crisps, sit outside and watch the sun fall behind the mountains. I mean, it was beautiful. And I was like, fuck, man, this is what retirement's going to be like. And (laughs) it was so nice because we, you know, it was nice to have that opportunity to spend so much time together, like 24-7. So it was, there has been some ups to these downs, I guess. Sure. So what do you hope for for next year? Mm. I hope for a bit more stability financially for everybody. I'm very fearful for people in lower incomes who are reliant on work that they have to travel to, for businesses that may have just started up or have been in operation for years that have had to close down. Mm. I fear for the high street. So this isn't great. I'm fearful, right, about what's coming. It's not – there will be a flip side to what we've just been through with – I mean, not least of all the health – worries because we're still right in the grips of a pandemic especially in London it's not going well it's just who knows what 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 
is coming who knows mm. but i think we just have to be kind to each other people keep saying that but it's absolutely true because there are a lot of people who have different opinions about covid-19 or the pandemic or about how the, to respond you know, to it how to respond the politi- the politicians and how they're responding i mean yes there's a buffoon making decisions on our behalf i didn't even vote for him but because he's saying to wear a mask in public i'm going to wear a mask in public because I want to show my community that I care and that I stand with them. I want everybody to stick together. Like what Tamira said, utopia, oneness. Yeah. One love. Come on, people. One love. They're trying to save people's lives. They're trying to save our economy. They're trying to save our National Health Service, which is amazing here in this country. I can't speak for any other countries because I've lived in the UK for more than 30 years now so I really don't know anything but I do know that it's an amazing institution and it needs to be preserved really respected preserved and and taken care of and if that's what we have to do then that's what we must do stop being pains in the asses come on people well I want to just flip flip this question around because I said to you what do you hope for next year and it ended Mm. up you being being around fearful yeah Yeah. you went on a rampage um (laughs) No, but I would like to know in a like what you hope for for yourself. Oh, I don't. I haven't thought about that. Just to keep going, I, I think just put, putting one foot in front of the other. I'm more concerned for my community and and okay. the country, and then going further out. I'm just concerned for people. I want them to all be okay, one way or the other. Oh, that's, that's very what I hope selfless. For. I'm <laughs> I'm completely selfish in what I'm hoping for. I'm sure there are some more personal goals, but I haven't thought of them. It's like Christmas when I was asked what I wanted for Christmas. Oh, God, I never what I said because I didn't get it. No. I said, where's that bloody top I wanted from Zara? He said, well, I got you some... I got you some secondhand socks and an old book instead. <laughs> he said, you don't ask for what you want. I was like, yeah, well, you asked me. <laughs> don't ask me if you don't want to know. Oh. oh, do you know what? Andreas kept asking me, what do you want? What do you want? I was like, I don't know. I've got everything. I don't, I don't want anything. But I ended up with gorgeous brand new jumper. Um, Shame you're not wearing it today, Michelle. Mate, I've got the robe on. You can't beat the robe. I love this jumper, but robe is top trumps. All I'll say is uh, Happy New Year to everyone out there and wishing every Happy New Year. (laughs) Do you know what my dad used to do on New Year? He'd go out and go, Happy New Year. And then he'd go, (laughs) then he would go and howl like a dog and get all the neighborhood dogs to howl as well. (laughs) Aru! You loved it. (laughs) He's a wacky, wacky guy. Anyway, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you too, Michelle. And anyone who's listening, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. And see you next year for Hoofs Dropping. It's dropping. It's dropping. It's dropping. It's dropping. It's dropping.